I have been complaining way too much about my subscriber growth lately. So, your likes! Please, give. And if you enjoyed this video by the end and you aren't subscribed already, please consider it. It's Studio Series Rise of the Beasts Rhinox, a figure that has been getting a lot of hype lately. So many of my followers have messaged me about how good this thing is, and I will say this. I don't get it. I don't have any clue what people are seeing in this thing. I'm glad that you don't feel like you wasted your money, but this sucks. I mean, we have already gotten a far better Rhinox from this very movie in the mainline one. That, while obviously is not as accurate, just exceeds this thing in all other ways. And why would you even care if it is accurate? This design shows up in the movie for all of 10 seconds, and it's never center of frame, it's always borderline in the background. Oh yes, let's trade absolutely everything that made that other figure great to achieve screen accuracy to a thing we never see. I mean, if you need a more accurate one, which I don't think you should, but if you really care, this is the one that looks like that ugly ass thing from the movie. And it is at best, in every way, a side grade when it is not a downgrade. For instance, my only real problem with the mainline figure is that it was far too brown. This traded out 90% of that brown for gray. Oh, what a lateral change! It's such a not different at all! I am not horrifically bored by these colors! Why do these movies fucking hate fun? Why do these movies insist on everyone being gray? Rhinox, gray. Starscream, gray. Sideswipe, gray. Grimlock, gray. Soundwave, gray. Laserbeak, gray. Ironhide, the darkest gray. Please give me some color. Rant aside, outside that, this thing just looks dumb as hell. The pauldrons are floating off the shoulders, the body is bloated, the proportions are whack, bro looks like the hunchback of Notre Dame fused with a hot air balloon. And oh yeah, amazing, that looks so good with the arms out to the side. I will say it's built well, and it stands easily, despite having what I'd say are feet that are on the smaller side of average, and that would be great if I actually wanted to look at this thing, but I really don't, so it can fall over and I won't be too sad about it. It's actually kind of impressive just how much this guy looks like he's wearing someone else's torso as a shirt. Guy looks like he started putting on some Grey Knight Space Marine armor, but gave up after the breastplate and pauldrons because it was too heavy. Or maybe it's something from StarCraft, I feel like this guy should have a bubble helmet. And what the hell are those shoulder ears? Are these supposed to be the rhino horns? Because last I checked, rhinos have one big one and one little one, and neither of these are big enough or small enough. The beast mode has one that's way bigger and one that's way smaller than either of these, and they look way more like ears than anything else. Hilariously, the beast head is exactly where I thought it was going to end up going in this mode, however, it's facing the opposite direction, so I legitimately thought that these were going to be his rhino ears poking up out of here before I got this in hand. Instead, nope, they're just the dumbest faux foring parts I've ever even considered, because they're a fake part that's pretending to be something that the figure doesn't have. It's like if instead of Optimus having a fake stomach grill on so many of his figures, he just had a pair of wings jutting out of his gut for no reason. Why have you done this? I don't understand, and he honestly looks better without them. Also, they're an incredibly forgettable part of the transformation, so if I fail to flip these out before filming this for the review, I don't want to hear about it. I guess this figure is big for a Voyager at least. He's stocky, he's goofy, and he just doesn't look like Rhinox. Except for the head. I will give it this. This is actually a far better Rhinox head than the mainline and Kingdom figures had. And I honestly don't think it's hyperbole to say that this might be the most accurate head in all the movies. The only one that I can even think that comes close would be the Rise of the Beasts or maybe Bumblebee movie RCs, or the two more recent Optimus designs. Because this is basically just Rhinox's exact head in gray with some cheek armor and a foul expression. There's a little more to it than that, but I'm actually really happy with this head sculpt. More movie characters should have head sculpts that are this good. I mean, maybe give them an expression that the character is kind of known for, and obviously you no, colors please. But like, this just looks like the dude. I'm not confused as to who it is. You could show me this in black and white and I wouldn't even need to guess. I'd just be able to tell you for sure that it's Rhinox. And I know that for a fact because this figure is already in black and white for some reason. It's an extremely good head. Too bad about the rest of the figure. For accessories, he gets this hammer, which is ribbed for her pleasure. Why the fuck does it look like that? This would chew your hands up so bad if you tried to use it. I suppose this thing is accurate to the movie, but not the weapon the character is known for, and he can't exactly hold it right. I suppose it's supposed to be held in two hands, but the figure is not dexterous enough to do that. So instead, he's just one-handing it, and holding it about 80% of the way up the haft. So it looks like he's trying to avoid harming people, just bonk. You really couldn't have thickened up this first segment of the handle, so it looks like he's holding it like he's trying to hurt someone. It's got a tiny amount of paint, and it folds into something that kind of looks like a gun, so that would be really cool if he could fucking hold it. But it seems like he was designed not to intentionally. Why? Don't worry though, guys, because while the hammer is goofy, out of character, and lame, the posability also sucks. Head has a little bit of up, a good amount of waggle, and theoretically can turn, but good luck trying to do that because it is abnormally round, on an extremely tight peg, and surrounded by crap so it's impossible to grab it. And the force required to turn it is immense, at which point it's even harder to straighten the fucker back out. 
shoulders pull a really ugly 90 and are mounted way below the shoulder line. You can untransform him for some backwards butterfly, but then you have to untransform him even more to retransform him to get it back into place. Significantly less than 90 elbows, and he can't even bend them around his stupid inflated torso. Wrist swivel, legs are unimpeded in all directions and exceptionally so going forward. Double jointed knees that bend a full 90 and seem like they're intentionally designed to stop you from going further. I swear the designer is trying to fuck us all over. And feet with a good toe down and an extreme pivot. So on paper, this thing would be pretty good. But under 90 elbows is one of the worst things a figure can have. The head is atrocious to use. The shoulders just look wrong in every pose because of how low they're mounted. And the pauldrons are not helping. And then the stumpy nature of the legs only pulling a 90 is at least average but also goofy looking. So this is an awkwardly built figure that only looks worse when you pose it. But wait, there's more! Because the transformation is also terrible! It's not involved, it's not complicated, and yet it's, at the same time, way too hard. It takes an immense amount of force to get the hands to hinge out on their brackets, and it takes almost no force to pop them off. So it's pretty much guaranteed that when you convert this guy, these will go flying. Then, amazingly, it's actually really annoying to line up the fist properly to go back in, since it's not obvious which way they're supposed to go, so it's just memorization to get that part where it needs to be. Or trial and error. Opening the abs on this figure is incredibly hard, because if you don't have fingernails like me, there is just no good place to grip this from. And then the chest likes to pop off too. If you transform the rhino horn wrong, you can just about chop it in half as it splints between two square parts going into robot mode. Everything takes too much pressure to move. The head is just mostly covered by the rhino neck, which it takes an absolutely ludicrous amount of force to get that part out, to the point where every time I try, I convince myself that it's not actually supposed to move. Then you can still see his face from the underside of the neck, and lastly, while the whole figure is barely doing anything to switch mode, the legs specifically do nothing to transform. Bend them the wrong way at the knee, and that's it. And then when you're finished, you're sure that you must have done something wrong. There is no way that this can be right. But it is. Yeah, this process is just f here. There is just not one step of it that makes me happy. And then the rhino mode is fucking atrocious. Is it more accurate to the real-life animal? Yes. Is it more accurate to the movie design? A bit, though it's missing the giant mouth he had in the film. Instead, it's got this god-awful little vestigial beak that looks like the head of a spoon. But you see, my big problem with this thing is that it is blatantly fake. It's like a cardboard standee of the dude. It only looks passable from specific angles. You look at this thing from anything other than profile or ass first, and you can see this thing is missing its entire chest cavity. I suppose cavity is the operative term here. He looks like the gorilla kaiju from Pacific Rim after they shot it in the lungs like 10 times. This looks like a grievous, instantly fatal wound. And honestly, the whole thing looks diseased and malnourished. I don't know how a figure that was so overly bulky in robot mode wound up so unhealthily thin in beast mode, but it just looks wrong. It can't pose for shit either. Head has a bit of up and down, mouth opens and closes, front legs have like 10 degrees of motion, no elbows, and the rear legs only bend at the knee, though they do have more than 90 now going the wrong way. And ladies and gentlemen, we are back to the top of the video, because I don't get the popularity of this thing. I don't. This thing sucks. This is a god-awful, borderline brick of a beast mode that looks unfinished and gory. This looks like Rhinox's rotting corpse. And the rest of the figure is just garbage too. It's boring looking, it's ugly, awkward with bad proportions, no color to be found, just gray everywhere, looking like a chaotic mess of a scrapyard sculpture. Everything is frustrating handling this, from all the parts that want to pop off, in or out of transformation, to the ways that you can damage this thing, to all the joints you need a crowbar to move. The transformation is stunning stunningly bad for how little you do, and there's just nothing worth it here. Now obviously this thing is going to be better than the Kingdom Rhinox, that's a bar so low that you'd have to start digging to trip over it, but this is trying. It's not as ugly as the Kingdom, but it's really ugly. Its posing is not as bad as the Kingdom's, but it's pretty bad at posing. The transformation is not as frustrating as the Kingdom's, but it's really frustrating, and the alt mode is probably in about the same ballpark as the Kingdom's. Look guys, just get the mainline one. It's excellent, it's fun, in every way it's doing better than this thing. It's not as good looking as I'd like it to be, but it's better than this with solid proportions, it poses really well, the accessories rule, the transformation is extremely fun, and the alt mode is an adorable little toaster. That thing is great, and it deserves your money. This is an easy pass when there's already an alternative that good. And when it doesn't even matter, because you never see this loser in the movie anyways. There is a much better figure out there for this specific version of this character from this movie, and its only theoretical problem to some people is that it doesn't look accurate to a character that you never get a good look at in the first place. I just cannot fathom why people are saying that this is the better figure. I don't get it. And that's not half what I have to say, but it's enough what I have to say. And I know, you know, what everyone else tells you to do at the end of these videos. So, if you liked what you saw here, please do that. And if you'd like to take it a step further, then please, share this video with any friend you think may be interested. I hope you all enjoyed listening to me waste your time.